welcome to a special edition of Death and Entertainment. The rumor mill is buzzing about this week's episode. A friend of a friend of a friend says the subject is urban legends. What, what, what? And I'm happy to report that the whispers are absolutely true. Did Mikey from the Life Cereal commercials really die from mixing Pop Rocks and soda? Is that a real scream in the song Love Roller Coaster? Did Mama Cass really choke on a ham sandwich? For the answers to all those burning questions and more, keep right on listening. Live from Los Angeles. 911, what is your emergency? Here in Hollywood now. Two counts of murder, injury, and death. Oh my God! Shocking new details that has stunned the entertainment world. Um, this makes me a little nervous. The hair stood up on my arms. Just like in the movies. Ah! What do you call this thing, anyway? Death in entertainment. Yo, yo, what's up? What's up, dogs? Here we are on uh, online. <laughs> Dipod on the road, COVID style, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a very special episode of Death and Entertainment. Kyle, where are you exactly? I am about 1.25 miles from the Boston border all the way in North Quincy, Massachusetts, dog. That's the home of Dunkin' Donuts where uh, it was born. Uh, you better believe it. I just went to Dunkin' Donuts in Connecticut when I was driving and took yeah, a picture you- of the, the Quincy one that's right down the street. <laughs> nice. It was an art piece that said humble beginnings. <laughs> yeah. And now that's where people go to beat the shit out of everybody in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's really where it originated? Quincy Mass, yep. All right. Well, something good came out of there. Yeah, at least one thing. <laughs> yeah. Because it ain't this guy. Good relative. Who the hell, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, shall we introduce ourselves? What's up, everybody? My name is Kyle Plouffe. My name is Mark Malkarin. And I'm Alejandro Dowling. And if you're, uh, you know, listening to it without seeing the video and it sounds like this is a Skype call, uh, that's because it is this week. Yeah, unfortunately, due to uh, technical difficulties, uh, <laughs> I guess we could tell people we lost two episodes, basically, that we have to re-record. But this is, today is going to be, it's very well planned out, and it's going to, you're going to love this also. So mm-hmm. you're just getting, uh, you're getting more content from us, if anything, uh, and we're going to fix those other two at a later date, and you're going to love it. You That's it. right. You got no choice. <laughs> yeah, and so today we're going to be discussing Hollywood urban legends. Ooh, I'm excited because I know nothing about what we're going to cover. Like I said before, we, we've we already kind of touched on Marilyn Manson removing his rib and Richard Gere, you know, with the gerbil situation. So I'm excited to see what else we have, which I'm sure we have a lot. <laughs> I think even before pre-internet, there was like a lot of things that would happen that would just be word of mouth and weren't wouldn't be confirmable on like Snopes.com or something. Now it's easier to like just like if that happened today. I think I talked about it before, where you know the story of uh, Richard Gere putting a gerbil in his bum. You know, I think (laughs) I think I think the internet would be quick to shut that down. Uh, Yeah. But there would always be a whisper about it. People would respect that the story should stay between Richard Gere and the gerbil. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't care back then. Yeah. What happens with a with a movie star and a gerbil behind closed doors is people's business. Yeah. What happens at Petco stays at Petco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And with that, we are going to start out with a kind of special version of Pop Culture Flash. So let's go. Okay, well, these are the top five celebrity death hoaxes. This is uh, what we're doing for the pop culture flash today. Um, I'm going to read from five, and I'm going to go up to one here. All right. Uh, Number five is Abe Vigoda. I didn't even know about this one. The rumor started in, in 1982 when people uh, referred to him as the late Abe Vigoda, assuming he was dead as early as 1982, <laughs> which is kind of rude if you ask me. 
uh, the magazine people, but also regular people. Oh, wow. yeah, it is capitalized. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> I thought just regular townspeople. Who the fuck like, are hey, these people? Hey, that guy ain't a goat. Too bad about him. <laughs> I'll rest in peace. Uh, not being on time, being late all the time. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> that was always the punchline at all those Comedy Central roasts. And the Friars Club that Abe Vigoda was dead. Like, sorry you couldn't be here tonight, Abe. <laughs> yeah, well, it was it was weird. And then uh, also that that uh, B. Arthur had a big dick. That was yeah. the other uh, thing that had all those rows anyway. They'd always say the two big ones. <laughs> yeah, uh, and L- Lisa Limpinelli is a big gross monster or something. Um, yeah. Okay, so number four. That's just true. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. So moving up the list here, number four, uh, Jackie Chan. I guess I didn't know about this one either. In 2011, the Facebook group called Jackie Chan R.I.P. earned <laughs> nearly 150 thousand likes. Uh, so I, I guess there there was someone one day decided in 2011 to start a Facebook group dedicated to the death of Jackie Chan, but he, he was never dead. Yeah. Just his career now. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, you Oops. said it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Preach to the choir. <laughs> but why did he kind of why did he go away? I think he just got tired of doing those uh stunts. That's all he was he like destroyed his yeah. body. I'm surprised he survived. Yeah. yeah. I think they're gonna be doing rush hour four. I might be wrong, but I thought I heard oh. uh, that might be coming mm. out soon. But it's going to be like one of those hack ones where you like you see, you know, those old action stars that they don't really do any actiony stuff anymore. They just yeah. look on as like things blow up. Right. Yeah, they have snarky uh, jokes. <laughs> Even uh the sad story of Bruce Willis, the movies he was doing before that, he was just kind of vacantly staring on as like a lot <laughs> of like as a lot of storyline and things were moving around and stuff. Yeah. And even yeah. the last Terminator, they had Arnold play an old Terminator with gray hair. Oh, my <laughs> God. Like, do we really what? need that, you know? I might not be back. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, my back. <laughs> I'm having dinner at 4 o'clock at the early bird special. <laughs> um, okay, moving up the list here. Number three, Betty White. In 2014, there was an article that Betty, uh, actress Betty White died at the age of 92, dying peacefully in her Los Angeles home. That's yep. back in 2014. Um, oh, that wait, that was published on a satirical website called Empire News. So, do you notice the way that die is spelled? Dies. Um, oh my God. D Y E S. <laughs> that was the headline. So, wow. the article is about how she colored her hair. Oh my god! Oh my god! That is it's so. Everyone shared that article and assuming she was dead. Yeah, people mm-hmm. who can't spell. <laughs> yeah, and then of course she did die. Was that last year? Yeah, weeks yeah. before she turned a hundred. Yeah, they had the People magazine or whatever printed that she survived until a hundred, and she died like right before. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Bad luck Whoops. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially at that age, Jesus. Yeah, and it's too late to once they she dies, they can't just like pull all those you know copies. Pull the cover. Magazine. Yeah, pull it. <laughs> um, okay, moving up here, number two, Mark Twain. After two false obituaries, the headline was "Reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated," which is um, that's like a very big go-to line, cliche yeah. kind of. The OG line. You yeah. wish I was dead, you motherfuckers. <laughs> so apparently he was on a cruise ship and kind of disappeared for a little while. And they thought that he had gone to the afterworld. Oh, jeez. <laughs> he w- he just went to the buffet and people were like, ah, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he went to the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> the buffet at the Bahamas. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> number one here, Paul McCartney. Some believed uh, an imposter had replaced the singer because wasn't there like something in one of the songs where if you listen to it slowly, it said Paul is dead? I'm sure. Probably. Think of it right now. <laughs> or backwards, uh, you play it and it says, I'm dead. Paul yeah. is dead. 
Chris Farley asked him that question in the Chris Farley show. Remember, he'd have that weird kind of nervous kind of yes on SNL. Hey, remember that time we uh where you thought you were dead, but you really weren't? And Paul's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's talking to Bruce Willis. He's like, remember in Die Hard, um, um, when you walked on broken glass with bare feet? And he's like, yeah. And he's just like. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, why don't we go to our first urban legend, which will take us to the year of 1939. Okay, here we are. Just to remind everyone what an urban legend is. It's modern folklore that's been passed on friend to friend usually. Like, oh, did you hear about this? Or I heard from so-and-so's sister's friend about this. Yeah. And then it circulates as a true story. And oftentimes these stories reflect cultural values and they're funny, they're scary and they most likely have cautionary elements to them. Like there's an urban legend about a babysitter that took LSD. The parents came home and they're like, oh, where's the baby? Did you put the baby to bed? And the babysitter while on LSD said, yes. And I also put the turkey in the oven. Oh, and boy. the parents were horrified to discover the baby in the oven. The baby was now a turkey. Exactly. The baby was now Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. And that's a cautionary tale to not do acid. Yeah. Well, everyone has that story. My mom had it too of like that person that did acid in college and then just jumped out a window. <laughs> like, yep. once, right. once the acid started really hitting them, they just like, they just dive out a window because they think they can fly. Yeah. And supposedly, Diane Linkletter, daughter of Art Linkletter, who hosted Park Your Carcass Roast. Mm -hmm. She really jumped from a building on LSD. Oof. Really? Yeah, that's not even an urban legend. She did, and she died. Well, maybe there's some truth to that then. <laughs> that, that one, yes. <laughs> that's the yeah. only one, though. <laughs> All right, so let's get into The Wizard of Oz here. Have you both heard of this one? I just know that in the background in the woods, you could see something bobbing through the trees. Yes, <laughs> and that something is supposedly a lovelorn actor who was playing one of the munchkins. And that actor hung himself on set while they happened to be filming this iconic scene. And so that's what you can see waving back and forth, swaying left to right, is his corpse hanging from a noose. Yep. I love that the shot was so good. Or the crew was that lazy that they didn't want to do another shot. Another like, take. Yeah, we're not getting another shot. <laughs> yeah, that take was just too good. It's union time, pal. Uh, you see what time it is? We got to get going. We don't even have time to cut this munchkin down. We got to go. <laughs> yeah. Or do it in post to change it. Yeah. No, no, we're keeping it. It's going to ruin the shot. And yeah. then doing it in post required scissors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, film. <laughs> yeah, that's All right. Well, <laughs> physically, you had to physically change the print if yeah. you had to do that. And, and no, yeah. it's not worth it. Okay. So, should we check this clip out and see for ourselves? Let's do it. Yes. We're going to watch two versions of it. The first one is the original VHS, and that one I is had. muddier. Very apparent there's something weird going on in the background. And that's going to be followed by the newly remastered version. And Ooh. let's see the difference. Okay, you see it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see it. I definitely see it. You can't right there it. in the center. Just Yeah. Oof. The scarecrow just waved at it. <laughs> How's it hanging? We masked the person. And it's not there. Because of the wonderful things he does. 
But I wonder if they something else is there. What was that? A bird. Oh. Here's the theory. It was devised by some editor or some somebody that was part of that process of putting it to video. They wanted to create a little heat around the video release in the 80s. So they muddied that shot, make it look wow. like there's something there and possibly planted that story so that you would wow. have to go rent it and buy it and rewind and pause. And, you know, VHS, it's not very clear to begin with. It's, it ain't like yeah. Blu-ray. Oh, we fell for that then because I remember we had that VHS and when we would have sleepovers at my place, I would show people all the time. I'm like, look at this. It's so crazy. <laughs> so I have hook, line and sinker got that. Yeah, me too. Because <laughs> I was like, you can't deny it. There's somebody hanging. Uh -huh. One idea is that it's the same thing. The bird was always there, just manipulated to look like it was something else. Yeah. Oh. But then some people say that that crane the bird in the new version the remastered version that that was added digitally over the other thing oh my god because <laughs> yeah in the new hd version it very much looks like a bird i remember being super upset finding out that it was debunked and then hearing it was a it was actually a bird that got loose or something that they yeah. were using for another scene um but who knows if that got entered in digitally after that's crazy what version is this that you you got this cleaner one off of? This is the latest version available on HBO Max. I guess it's just Max now. Yeah. yeah. It definitely looks a lot better, and I, I couldn't help but notice. I've never, I've never seen this before in my entire life, and I could definitely, that first version, could see that something weird was going on in the woods there. And they maybe they just heard people talking about it. They're like, why not just take it out just in case? Yeah, because look at that. You don't see the crane's wings in this one. So how would they have taken no. that out? And now here back it's, to the remastered. It's clearly a bird in this HD version. Something's going on. Either in the 80s or now something was manipulated. <laughs> yeah. So I wonder, like, who who is the munchkin in love with was it dorothy or was it one of the wicked witch from the west who was it oh there's all <laughs> sorts of stories the what is true though is that the munchkins i shouldn't call them munchkins the little actors sure that sounds worse <laughs> <laughs> i thought little people was the proper connotation these days yeah yeah the short people were okay not treated so kindly on that set. They weren't yeah. paid very well. And a lot of them were alcoholics, so they were drinking and fighting with each other. There was a lot of infighting wow. with the Munchkin community. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and apparently within <laughs> that group, you know, there were some love triangles and whatnot. So one guy just got so depressed because he saw his woman hanging out with one of the other munchkins, maybe the mayor, who knows? Wow. The mayor of Munchkinland? Yeah, Munchkinland, yeah. And then got so jealous and depressed that, yeah, he hung himself and they happened to be filming. And director Victor Fleming said, ah, let's just keep the shot, that was good. Wow. Yeah. Cut, print, that's lunch. Right. <laughs> oh, and then one more thing, just at the beginning here, I want you to notice something with Dorothy. Pay very close attention to Dorothy. Do you see that? She looks back. There you go. Yeah, so she so why is she looking back? See? This is like the Sapruder film here. Back into yeah. the left. Back into the left. <laughs> She's clearly <Yeah>. disturbed <laughs> by something. Back yeah. Into the left. <laughs> she does look back into the left too. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> so you know i don't you know you think it's the last squeaks from the uh the the person the little person who, who choked himself <laughs> yeah oh my god <laughs> no i think she's like whoa look at that munchkin that's hanging from a tree wow shouldn't we but stop I, the shot she's such a professional though she keeps going along with the shot though yeah consummate Const pro <laughs> oh yeah, i was just about to say that <laughs> the show must go on <laughs> 
Okay, well, Jeez. to debunk this a little bit, what I read is that the Los Angeles Zoo provided several birds that were free to roam the set to give the Land of Oz an outdoor feel because it was all on a soundstage. Yeah. And there were no reported deaths during production. It still blows my mind that this was filmed in Culver City. Yeah. MGM Studios. Which is now Sony. There's a Chipotle wherever they're standing right now or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back then. Yeah. But I, I, I wouldn't trust any company back then to properly report any deaths that happened on the on the job. You know, I that is true too. And, and I think we've covered in what was it the William Randolph? What what was it the, the first uh murder in Hollywood? Oh yeah, Desmond Taylor. Yeah, yeah, that Desmond the Taylor. Desmond Taylor episode, you know, the studios control the city, you know, the police, yeah. politicians, everything about it. So anything that gets reported, you know, the studios are in charge of it. So I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know when that stopped, but it, up until like the 1930s or 40s, I think they were in control of the entire city. Well, yeah, I'm sure even well past that, but. I wouldn't even I wouldn't put it past the studios if Twilight Zone the movie happened in the 30s. You would have never found out that those two kids died. Mm-mm. <laughs> They'd be like, "What kids? What's going on? What are we talking about?" Yeah, it'd be like that movie Changeling, where like they just you know gaslight yeah. you and just say, "You never had a son. You never had a daughter." You know, they yeah. do some crazy thing like that. Oh my goodness! So where do we stand on this? False or true? Uh, false. I'm going to say false. I guess I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Mark does make a compelling argument here, though, that uh, the studios did rule. It could actually be true. But you would think that uh, someone would have come out and said, that was Greg. We knew him. <laughs> and nobody's yeah. done that. So Money talks. And, you know, if, if you know some of those studio fixers come up to a munchkin and be like, hey, you want to keep acting? You know, yeah. you want to keep you want to keep breathing? You know, yeah. don't <laughs> keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Hey, little guy, you want some big money? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Just showering. Uh, <laughs> but little <yeah>. small dollars. <laughs> <laughs> little dimes and pennies. <laughs> oh, my God. Ow. <laughs> Why are they yeah, what's the, ex- what's the exchange rate of this little penny? <laughs> Well, well, that was worth probably 10 bucks back then, a penny. Yeah. Yeah. I say false, too, only because, look, it's not inconceivable that somebody would have done that somewhere on the production, but to be captured on film, even if they weren't filming, to be on the set and nobody noticing this is happening. Yeah. I just don't buy it. One of the more plausible theories would be that it was a hapless stagehand who was trying Mm. to stay out of focus and then tripped and fell oh wow so there you go food for thought all right we ready for our next one let's do it yeah all right by the way that first (laughs) (laughs) that first segment what is going on here the first segment was titled the mournful munchkin of oz and this segment is called mean acres arnold ziffel on a spit (laughs) oh my god (laughs) <laughs> I'll explain. <laughs> All right. All right, so Green Acres, are we familiar with this classic TV show? I've never seen it, but I know of it. Da dun da dun da 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 Never seen it either, but I know the song from uh, the movie Sudden Law with um, Polly Shore. Yeah. They, they play yeah. the theme song in that movie, yeah. which, is, which is a weird way to be introduced to that, that TV show. Green yeah. Acres is the place to be. To be. The show starred Eddie Albert and Ava Gabor as a couple who move from New York City to the countryside to live on a farm. Mm. Is this the, the Gabor sister who uh, slapped the cop in the face? No, that's Jaja. Yeah, uh, that's Jaja. the one I know. This Sasha is Gabor. Ava Gabor, her sister. Uh. There's something very Hollywood squaresies about the uh, the Gabor sisters for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jaja Gabor, on her deathbed, she was married to some guy that claimed to be the father of Anna Nicole Smith's baby. Oh, God. <laughs> Man, that's a lot to put on a business card. 
<laughs> so back to Green Acres. The neighbors were Fred and Doris Ziffel, and they had a spoiled pet pig named Arnold. And this pig understood English and acted like a human. Oh, my God. We have a little clip here to show you what that was all about. <laughs> well, the paper pig is here. Hello there, Arnold. What? What is she wearing? Well, let go of it. He wants his money. I've already paid Willie for this month. <laughs> Lucky for him, the price of pork is down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they made so many pig jokes in that show. Nonstop. <laughs> Yeah. Imagine watching that. That's like a, what you watch. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a regular pig roast. Yeah. Nice. But you, I, I imagine like the, the script is like guy says something and then the pig does something funny. You know, it's just like, I don't know how you'd write for that show. How do you write for a pig? Not exactly <laughs> intellectual material here. No, not to say it's gotten much better. Ask Rosie O'Donnell's writers. Oh! <laughs> is, is Trump here? Yeah. You call women pigs only Rosie O'Donnell. Only, only Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Green Acres lasted from 1965 to 1971. Six seasons, 170 episodes. How about wow. that? Wow, 170. I'd kill for that. I, you could retire on that today with the yeah. money that they made from that. Oof, I know. So here's the claim. They wrapped up, right? 170 episodes. Everyone is sad to go, but they're happy they had a good run. It's going to go into syndication. So at the farewell party, everyone's there, cast and crew. Suddenly, they turn around and this chef rolls in the main course, Arnold Ziffel, the pig, on oh a spit God. with an apple in his mouth. And the no. rumor is half the cast and crew were so disgusted that they walked off immediately. Wow. But they, there's no way they just had one pig that was on the show. It was like the Olsen twins, you know? There was probably like five pigs. I'm not comparing <laughs> the Olsen twins to, to pigs, but like it's a Yeah, similar, you are. <laughs> there was like a pen of them, you know? Like I'm sure there, there was they a, had a pen twins. of Olsen. <laughs> yeah. You may be onto something there. Whatever chef cooked up this pig, it wasn't the only Arnold. Another version is Ava Gabor invited her sister Jaja to join them at the rap party. And they didn't care at all because she hated that pig. And so they oh gleefully ate the barbecue to the bone. No so way, she, dude. She had like some, some torrid dispute with the mm -hmm. pig. You know, like, <laughs> like it's like well, selling you know. Sunset or like the Real Housewives. <laughs> like the, there, she had a legitimate like problem with the pig. Excuse me, pig. I'm top pig on set. Like on a personality <laughs> pro like level. Like what? Yeah. Not every co-star gets along. You know how egos work on those big shows where you have sure. to share the top billing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do we want to get to the truth of this all? Please. Uh, the truth yes. is, as Mark pointed out, about a dozen pigs portrayed Arnold Ziffel. Their trainer said they were all allowed to live out their natural lives on farms. There we go. Yeah, right. That's what they always say, though. Well, yeah. What else are you going to say? That he was delicious? <laughs> the same rumor was later applied to the movie Babe. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, did you hear what they did after they wrapped the movie? You're not going to believe what James <laughs> Cromwell ate. <laughs> yeah. This one, to me, I just... I smelled bu bullshit off the top because I know people who have like gone to school for agriculture and stuff. And when I went to go visit their school, they were like, oh, this is like our stable full of animals. This is Dave. This is Natasha. It's the, we're talking about cows and stuff. Then we go to a mm -hmm. different one and I'm like, oh, what are their names? And they were like, we don't name the ones we eat. So like, oh, 
if there are any trainers on set or like anybody that was dealing with the pig, they would have never allowed that to happen because they already had like a relationship with this animal. Of course. Just my two cents. You'd hope so. Yeah, they would have to be the most evil motherfuckers on the planet to do that. Almost satanic, like a cult. Yeah, and enjoying the taste of their (laughs) co-star. And there's a rumor that happened on the Rosie O'Donnell show last episode. (laughs) They cooked her up. (laughs) Donald Trump was like, she's delicious. Oh, this pig's delicious. Only Rosie O'Donnell. (laughs) Okay, are we ready for our next one? Let's do it. Yes. This one's called Little Mikey, the pop star. The life. Oh, yeah, the life kid. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Great graphic here. (laughs) This is awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Dropping the pop rocks into the Coke, the fizzling Coke. Yeah. Okay, so do you guys know what happens supposedly when you mix pop rocks and Coke? You die. Yeah, it explodes in your intestines. Yes. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, been a good show, everybody. Good night. Has anyone really tried this? Possibly. Uh, maybe we should we should uh, Patreon stream that. <laughs> yeah. You're doing it, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. All right, sounds good. Okay, so I want to play the original commercial for our younger listeners. So this is the original famous Life cereal commercial with Mikey. Look at this stuff. Some cereal. It's supposed to be good for you. Did you try it? I'm not going to try it. You try it. I'm not going to try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. When you bring life home, (laughs) don't tell the kids it's one of those nutritional (laughs) cereals you've been trying to get them to eat. You're the only one who has to know. (laughs) he likes it he likes it (laughs) all right so that poor kid he was in hundreds of those commercials i wonder how much of that shit he had to eat oh too much take after take after take he probably spent his entire life eating it yeah nice he said he was probably like i hate this and they're like that's life kid He's like, give me that Pop Rocks and soda. I'm out of this thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm done with this shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello, Satan. I'm coming soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so that's what happened, supposedly. He was having fun with his brothers. Those were his real brothers in the ad, by the way. What? Oh, and wow. they're like, hey, I double dog dare you to drink. I think it might be Pepsi, actually. Of course, it could be any soda. These urban legends, all the details change all the time. So he drinks the soda and downs the pop rocks. And unfortunately, his intestines exploded. They took him to the emergency room, but it was too late. He was dead. Yeah. He shit out eight years of compacted life cereal. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, That's what killed him, the life cereal. (laughs) There's more cereal in this boy than there is boy. (laughs) Yeah, he's just a box of cereal at the funeral. (laughs) Yeah, they tip him out of a box into the grave. (laughs) (laughs) They just soak out all the milk before they bury him. (laughs) The coffin is a giant in cereal box (laughs) (laughs) that's life people are ripping off the proof of purchase before he gets buried (laughs) sinatra sings that's life as the as the casket goes down into the ground (laughs) (laughs) funny it may seem okay so this rumor was so persistent it even showed up in much of pop culture and i have a little clip all right. Featuring Kyle's favorite actor, by the way. <gasps> it's from a little movie called Urban Legend from oh, 1998. Gosh. Is it Rebecca Gayhart? Is that your favorite actor? Yeah. Future episode, Rebecca Gayhart. Oh, yeah, that's right. Noxzema girl. This is a lecture hall on a hip college campus. Oh, wow. Mr. Robert England coming on up. Had those before? Yeah, they're pop rocks. They crackle in your mouth. Eat some. Eat some. Is Joshua Jackson thirsty? Yep. What's wrong? 
Something you might have heard about mixing uh, pop rocks and soda? Well, supposedly, your stomach and your intestines, everything burst. Really? Anyone you know die this way? Mikey, from the cereal commercial. Give it to Mikey, he'll eat anything. Oh. <laughs> you mean him. <laughs> Mikey likes it. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's crushing. What if I told you that this is Mikey? Alive and well and working as an ad executive in New York City. Would you drink some then? Okay, so you get the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just the weird cut out there. I, I like that they, they went to Coke and said, hey, do you want to be included in this movie? And they were like, no. And then Pepsi's like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> clearly you need you need their permission to use the can. Well, is Pepsi connected to Mars? Isn't that who owns like Reese's Pieces or whatever? Because I think that they they got in on the ground floor with E.T. and Eminem's passed up E.T. And so they're like, we're never going to say no to a movie ever again. <laughs> yeah, maybe oh, that's true. Interesting. Yeah, this could have been the next E.T. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this movie? Urban yeah. legend, the next E.T. <laughs> <laughs> that's the boldest thing you've ever, ever put in the ad for a movie. Okay, so Professor Freddy Krueger, I mean yes. Robert Englund, he was correct. The uh, the kid's name is John Gilchrist, and he is alive and well, living in New York. He's now in the commercial ad business, and he's proud of his work as Little Mikey in the commercials. Always happy yeah. to sign an autograph. That's awesome. Who's who's looking for an autograph from that guy? Me. I will be. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go chase him down. Mikey likes it. <laughs> it kills. Look at that. You two are laughing, just like in the lecture yeah. hall. Okay, so that's another false one. Okay, y'all ready for this one? The next one's a huge one. No pun intended. Mama, Mama? Cat. Yeah, I remember hearing about this one. Ham sandwich. I remember this from the behind the music. They they covered this uh, pretty well. The, the that urban myth. Mm -hmm. The only thing I know about it is from Austin Powers when he's like going over what happened when he was frozen, and it's like Mama Cass is dead. How ham sandwich? <laughs> but I, I honestly I don't know that. anything about this either being <laughs> true or untrue. I really don't even know. Yes, <laughs> I have the Austin Powers clip. Here we go. Nice, Jimi Hendrix, deceased, drugs. Dennis Joplin, deceased, alcohol. Mama Cass, deceased, ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, they that's knew. all I know. They knew it was a hoax, but they went for the laugh. Well, do we know it's a hoax? Well, let's go over it then. Are let's we all it. familiar with Mama Cass? Singer in the Mamas and the Papas. Yeah, yeah. Huge band, right? In the 60s, early 70s. Literally. <laughs> they made comments in the songs about her being overweight. Yeah. <laughs> no, they did. One's getting fat, except Mama Cass or something. I never understood that. Yeah. I don't know. Because she, you know, she was a bigger gal. And yeah. I don't know. I guess they were fat shaming her. We know Papa John, you know, isn't the best guy in the world. <laughs> the guy who's writing the songs. He was a great dad. <laughs> father, father of the century this guy anyway that's besides the point yeah that's a different thing yeah um, we won't get into that yeah. <laughs> never Mackenzie Phillips didn't want to get oh, into it God. either no okay so <laughs> um so a lot of hits this section by the way is called California Hammond ooh <laughs> it's getting better Instead and better here <laughs> california dreaming their big hit right yeah yeah of course and then she of course does the definitive version of dream a little dream of me and here's the claim mama cass elliott of the mamas and the papas choked to death on a ham sandwich ham sandwich dr anthony greenberg the medical examiner who first examined the body after she died 
He told the press, quote, she appeared to have been eating a ham sandwich and drinking Coca-Cola while lying down. A very <laughs> dangerous thing to do. That's nice product placement from a coroner. Yeah, we went from <laughs> Pepsi to Coke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pick your poison. Look at all the fat on that sandwich. It, it Not only is it like... I thought you were going to say on Mama Cass. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not only is it a bad thing to eat like while you're lying down, you know, sideways, but that that sandwich looks like shit. I know that's not the real sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no idiot. I know that's a drawing. <laughs> I know that's not the real sandwich. You think I'm stupid? You trying to fool me? <laughs> 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 yeah, I was trying to throw you. <laughs> the guy who focuses on the wrong thing in the conversation. Yeah. Wait a second, I can't let this go. I can't let yeah. this slide. You think I think that's a ham sandwich? <laughs> that's a cartoon of a ham sandwich. What the fuck is wrong with you? Pal? It's an artist rendition of a of a ham sandwich. I'm, I know that. I'm not stupid. I can't eat that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I so require her, physical food. Yeah. Her death, <laughs> organically created food. <laughs> her death became <sighs> such a joke in the zeitgeist. Yeah, <laughs> everybody knew that she died eating a ham sandwich growing up. So yeah. that's got to be just a fake quote from a fake coroner. Like people no, that just was made the real deal. No, no, that was real. The coroner really said that. Yeah, he's the one that started that rumor. <laughs> this coroner so, is just like, she was actually eating a ham sandwich, lying down, drinking Coca-Cola. He said she appeared to have been. Oh, my God. There's a big difference there. <laughs> Semantics here. Yeah, appeared. Here. He didn't print that on the death certificate. He didn't see all this, like, generalities <laughs> or things that he witnessed. Not exactly. <laughs> and so we saw the Austin Powers clip. I'm sure you heard about this, you know, in the on the playground, right? Telling geeners to each other. Yeah. Mama Cass, she was very infatuated with Danny Darty uh, of the group of the same group, the Mamas and the Papas. That that I remember from the uh, behind the music years ago. Yes, Danny Darty, Un dude. Unrequited love, right? Yeah, I think she that kind of drew her to the ham sandwich, maybe because she couldn't. Uh, she couldn't get with Danny Doherty, maybe. Oh, shit. And so we get to the truth. Uh, can I take a guess? Sure. Congestive heart failure. You nailed it. First shot out of the bucket. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what gave it Wait, away? So <laughs> the year is 1974. Earlier that year, Mama Cass collapsed from exhaustion backstage at The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Oh, shoot. And her final weekend was filled with events, including Mick Jagger's birthday party and a brunch that was held in her honor in London. That sounds like the best week ever anyone's ever had. You're like, you're at Johnny Carson, you got crazy Ed serving you drinks and uh, you fall yeah. on the floor in front of him. Ah, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> and July 1974, that's... End of July, that's where we're at. And then finally, to top off the weekend, she attended a cocktail party, but left early, claiming she was very tired. And several hours later, she died of a heart attack in her sleep. With no ham sandwich. <laughs> there was a ham sandwich there, but get this. Uh. It was on the dresser or something, right? Nearby on the dresser, hadn't been touched. Oh, my God. What a dumbass coroner. Yeah. There was no bite. I can't believe that's a real quote. Yeah, coroners used to be scumbags back in the day. I, I don't, I'm not saying I know for a fact that they've changed their tune, but that's kind of a low-life thing to do. Yeah. And the autopsy confirmed she had no drugs nor ham in her system. Wow. That's crazy because... I mean, I wonder what the effect on like the ham industry was in the short term because people freak out anyway about anything. And if they hear something, they'll be like, oh, we can't get ham sandwiches. We're going to choke to death now. <laughs> but I, I, I like the idea that there's a blood test you could take to see if you have ham in your system. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's like like a drug test. Like whether when you have to work at like the uh, the post office or something, they give you a drug test and they see how much ham is in your system. Yeah, they make you blow into the pork elizer. <laughs> next time I, I'm on Chat GBT, the image creator, I'm gonna create a pork elizer. Whatever that yes. is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we found cocaine, Benadryl, and ham. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, Hellman's uh, ham or something. I'm trying to think of yeah. a, a brand of ham. Boar's head. Boar's head. head. <laughs> <laughs> we got a half a pound of boar's head in your bloodstream. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bad thing is you're eating too much ham. The good thing you have great. Uh. You have great choice of ham is boards. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great cut. Yeah. And then one final variation of this urban legend is that she was eating a sandwich made out of Arnold Ziffel from Green Acres. Oh, ah, wow. That's a twofer. Put them right in there together. <laughs> Call back. Okay. So <laughs> Mama Cass died in flat 12 of Curson Place in Mayfair, London, and it was actually an apartment owned by Harry Nielsen. Oh, wow. And get this. Harry Nielsen owned an apartment in London? Yes. And get this. Keith Moon died in the same bedroom four years later at the same age, 32. Wow, 32 club. Let's get it going. Did you have a roast beef grinder? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Turkey club. Yeah. They found a meatball sub by his bedside. Yeah. He was bludgeoned to death with a turkey club. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there was like the ghost of a meat cutter in this building or <laughs> <laughs> who was like taking out all these rock stars. It was yeah. like Sam from Brady Bunch or something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've heard of the 27 club. We got the turkey club here. Turkey we club. do. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and so this reminds me of the misinformation that surrounded Jane Mansfield's death, where everybody believed that she was decapitated when she really wasn't. Yeah, exactly. No one has time to look into the details of all this stuff and keep it all in your head. You just have one keyword about what happened to one person because yeah. you know that's how I, as long as you're remembered at least mama cass is remembered you know some people mm -hmm. you know don't even have that you know memory of this person living or dying right would you rather be be remembered of dying of a ham sandwich or just not being remembered at all that's the question we're posing here that's a great question just call me porky pig give me the boar's head <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's just a clear false. There's no way around that one. Yeah. False. Now we're moving on to the next one. And it's titled Murder Roller Coaster from the Ohio Slayers. The what? <laughs> what is going on here? All right, so they did a song called Love Roller Coaster. This is a deep cut on many on many levels. It's a very famous song. Roller coaster, I love. Yeah, say what? I thought that was Stevie Wonder for some reason. No. I bet you thought it was the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Did they do a cover of that? They did. Okay. For Beavis and Butthead to America. Yes. Okay, so their big hit, 1970s. Well, there's some dark background to this song. Oh, boy. It features a real blood-curdling death scream. Would you like to hear it? Yes, sir. How can I say no? Nah. <laughs> It's kind of out of place. I think I've heard this one before. The song, it's all men making sounds like, yeah, what to what? And then suddenly there's this blood curdling woman scream. Yeesh. That's, yeah, that, that's eerie. And so the story is, do you see this cover here? This is from the Ohio Players album cover. And the album is called Honey. And that's the album that Love Roller Coaster was on. I called it Murder Roller Coaster at first. Yes. Because 
This model was badly burned by the honey during the photo shoot. Yeah. And oh boy. She was glued down on top on some kind of plat glass platform. The glue fused with the honey and stuck to her. This is the legend. This is the legend. Okay. This is the legend. <laughs> <laughs> and so they when they ripped her off of it, it took the skin with her. She was badly burnt. Uh. And so then she angrily burst in the studio weeks later and demanded a settlement for all the suffering. <laughs> and instead of paying her, <laughs> the producers and the band ganged together and murdered her to keep <laughs> her silent. I thought they banded together to help her out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the scream that you hear in the song. Wait. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Wait, so the promo for the the album that they had already recorded, they somehow got her scream after the fact? No, they were uh, that was a photo shoot where that happened to her, so that it wasn't they weren't recording the song oh. that while the you know in the recording studio, I guess they uh got her scream on recording and thought, hey, that'd be pretty cool in the song. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about this one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this one's kind of out of pocket. The truth, <laughs> the real source of the scream was explained by one of the band members, Jimmy Williams. Quote, there is a part in the song where there's a breakdown, it's guitars, and it's right before the second verse, and Billy Beck does one of those inhaling type screeches like Minnie Ripperton did to reach her high... <laughs> her high note, or Mariah Carey does to go octaves above. The DJ made this crack and it swept the country. People were asking us, did you kill this chick in the studio? The band took a <laughs> bow of silence because that makes you sell more records. End quote. Yeah, smart. All right, so I guess that's it for that one. Uh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's no part of that that's true at all? She wasn't actually burnt? No. No, it's just completely it made look, up. Yeah. It looks really cool. The album cover is amazing, but like yeah. Yeah. that, that storyline is insane. It, it, it involves a lot of weird moving parts that don't really make sense. Yeah, there's no part of it that's like, oh, this makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> this could happen. It's the most out of fucking, out of the realm of any possibilities in each situation that happens in that story. Speaking of that, we're about to go to an even crazier music story. Oh, boy. Oh, here we go. And that is... We'll be back listening next week for more Hollywood Urban Legends. Oh, what's wrong? Something you might have heard about mixing uh, pop rocks and soda? Supposedly. Your stomach and your intestines, everything burst. Really? Anyone you know die this way? Mikey.